Within this tutorial, we're gonna walk through the four different ways you can actually merge an object here inside of the Unreal Engine. Now they're all basically gonna give you an outcome that's gonna be similar, but they're gonna be little tiny differences between each one, and you may find one is much more beneficial for what you're actually doing. So without further ado, let's take a look at what each one of these merge functions does and why you would use it. So to begin this, let's go ahead and move into the modeling mode. And you can do that up here in the top left hand corner where it says select mode. We're actually going to change this to modeling mode. So come right down here, go ahead and use this one. And when this first opens up, there's going to be a lot of tools on the left hand side. And I've gone ahead and marked the areas where you will see this word merge, or at least an abbreviation of it. So we're going to walk through these from top to bottom. So first and foremost, let's jump into the create section right here. And let's talk about this merge right here, because it is probably the one that you're looking for is the most useful. So I'm going to go ahead and select this cube down here, I'll hit F on the keyboard. And what I want to do is just make a duplicate of it. So I'm going to hold down the alt key on the keyboard, click and drag to make a duplicate. And let's just move this up and over a little bit so that it's actually interpenetrating the other one. Now, the important thing about this mesh merge up here is that it's not really going to affect any of the UVs, which is really helpful. And it's also not really going to affect any of the collision, which is also helpful. So this is really like my go to whenever I use one of these. So all you have to do is select one of these, hold down control and click on the next one. So we now have both of them, you will notice that this now lights up. Yes. So let's go ahead and click on that. And let's talk about the actual inputs that we can work with in here. So we're going to go ahead and write this to a new object, which is exactly what we want, because we don't want to affect these other two. Now, the reason that I say we don't want to affect them is you may want to change them later. Now, the next we can go ahead and give it a name, I'm going to leave this as combined, but use your naming conventions, of course. And for the output type, we'll just leave this as is, don't have to worry about that. And I'm going to go ahead and keep the inputs in this case, uh, its default is actually delete inputs, which will take it out of the level, I want to keep them in here because we're going to continue to use them. So there's that. The last thing that we want to check is where is this actually going to be saved to, I'm using the defaults, you can choose whatever you want to. Now I'm going to go ahead and say accept, like so And now if I back up a little bit, and I move this out of the way, you will see that I now have one object that has both of them on here. And the important thing here is that if I go inside of this, you can see that that other cube still actually exists there, it didn't actually get rid of any of that geometry, which is really helpful. So I'll just set this one out of the way. Next, let's go ahead and talk about our poly bottle version of it, right? So this mesh bool that's right here. So go ahead and select both of these and mesh bool will light up. Let's go ahead and click on that one. Now in this case, I'm going to change the operation up here at the very top, I'm going to make sure that this actually says union because I'm going to be unioning them together. Same thing as we had before this output down here will leave us from input right to a new object, we'll leave it at boolean. And I'm going to again, go ahead and keep the inputs. So we'll go ahead and say accept. And now when I move this out of the way, and I were to go and look inside of here, you'll notice that that other cube is now gone, right? It's not actually there. So what it's doing is it's actually merging these two together. So if we take a look at the actual wireframe, so I can come up here at the very top, go and choose wireframe, you can see, although it's a little bit tricky, that that geometry is actually gone. Maybe that helps because we're seeing it now in purple. So yeah, it's totally and completely gone. Now if we go ahead and set this back what it was, and if we go ahead and open up the editor here, uh, we can take a look at the UVs on this as well. So up here at the very top, ta -da, and you can see that the UVs have been altered because the geometry has actually been altered, although they have not moved around anywhere. And of course, they're going to be right on top of each other because I'm using the same object. So something to be kind of aware of in that one. Moving down the list, we have our mesh operations down here, and we have another one that says merge. So if we select both of these, go ahead and hit this merge. This is basically what we just did with the bullions, uh, but there's just a little less options and a couple other fancy things that go into it. But the end result is basically exactly the same. So I'm not going to change anything that you see over here, go ahead and just say accept. And if I move this over here, and if we go in close, you'll see that again, it's totally missing out of there. So it's what this one does, let's go ahead and open up the editor on this one as well. If we go ahead and look at the UV channels, you can see that this hasn't changed either. So maybe just one less button that you need to click and it does a few extra fancy things, but we won't go into them just here. And let's go ahead and just move on down the line. Now, the very last one that we're going to talk about down here is down underneath our voxel operations, specifically this voxel merge. Now, these all do some really cool stuff. We'll talk about those in a different video. But let's just talk about this voxel merge. So with these two selected again, we'll go ahead and hit this voxel merge. And you'll notice that this time it turns totally gray. And if you look right here at the edge, it's actually trying to like merge these together. So this is that's something that's really important to understand that we're basically creating a new object by looking at what it takes up in a voxel space, so a three dimensional space, you can actually change the resolution up here at the top, but I'm going to go 
going to leave all of this as is. I'm going to just accept. Now, something you will notice, let me move this over here, is it's completely gray. And if I turn on the wireframe in this case, you'll notice that it is very, very dense. And at these edges, it's done its best to try and keep that really crisp edge. If I get a nice angle at it here, you might kind of be able to see it. I'm going to turn that wireframe off. And you can see it's, it's pretty close. It's pretty good. It's not perfect, but it does a really good job of it. And we've got lots and lots and lots of polys. Along with that, if we open this up, you will notice that our UVs are non-existent. So this will totally and completely destroy UVs when you do a voxelization. So there you have it. There's a couple of different ways to actually merge inside of here. And I suggest you use this one up here at the top because it's probably going to be the most beneficial for whatever project you're working on. So if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, or confusion you need cleared up so that you can continue to create, go and just leave a comment down below. I'll get back to you when I get a chance. And don't forget to be clever like and subscribe.